Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here as ever. We are working on a Falchion, which is a very exciting project. I hope that you guys are going and grabbing your million subscriber t-shirts at alexsteelshop.com. I am currently wearing the Doys Definition t-shirt because we are going to be making some Doys today. You'll remember yesterday we did our first test hormone on this little test, uh, test Falchion. This piece here is now ready for heat treat. You'll see how beautifully it fits on our drawing. So step one is going to be claying this blade up. We're going to start by wrapping it in wire. So that clay is drying. My next step is going to be trying to make the guard. So I have a piece of steel that we're going to experiment with. We're going to see if we can draw this out long enough. And of course, you'll remember in yesterday's episode, I made up a tool. This right here for punching the impression into our guard that will seat that back end of the knife blade. We got the tool, we got the steel, but the fire is cold. It's still warming up. So now is a good time to backtrack on a lot of the historical facts that we pointed out a little bit earlier. I have been told that they are wrong. <laughs> I think the main problem with it is what these books call a falchion, from which Alex did his research, probably pretty broad, and it encompasses more than really what it is that we're trying to do, which apparently is not a Greek hunting weapon, but is a northern Italian or southern French just weapon weapon. I've been given some incredible information by James Elmsley, who is a very, very smart man on the subject of the falchion, and so we have been set straight. I've also been given some great tips on the actual thickness of the blade that we need in the distal taper, which is great because it means we're going to end up with a really nice fast moving sword as it should be. So it's not Greek, more Italian and French, but that's all right. I also know that this handle that I sketched out is about three quarters of an inch too long. It's meant to be eight and a half centimeters long. So without further ado, let's do some practice. So here we go, plenty of stuff to work with. We have extra length on both ends, which is beautiful, because that means that we're gonna be able to grind down the ends, cut down the ends, so that it keeps this and the hole that we're gonna have to make in our guard central to the blade, so that either side of here, we have even tines. I have to think about what is the finish that I wanna have on this, whether this is something I wanna polish and then do something to, or whether we wanna leave a forge finish, just in case I left it with rather clean off the hammer finish. It does look rather nice, and it could work from there, but we are gonna have to grind the backside to make sure that it is flat to the rest of the assembly for the hilt. But now, that is on the back burner. And though our clay has definitely not dried enough, we are going to jump right in and quench and begin the heat treatment process, or the final heat treatment process of the hardening and the tempering here at the blade. Up here, it's all it's still a little bit pudgy. It's still a lot more pudgy here. Not necessarily much worse than yesterday's. So I'm really hoping we get a similar result. I've warmed the oil up a little bit, which will help it cool down even faster. This is where we get success or failure. This is what counts. Whether it warps, whether the clay falls off, whether we overheat it, whether we underheat it. Here we go, into the fire. Oh, and the clay is already moving and bubbling. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna pull it out and just let it settle a little bit. The clay is swollen up to twice the size. Wow, it's like we got balloons on this thing. Three, two, 
One. Woo! All right, I'll give it a few more seconds to cool off. Then first objective, we're gonna peel off all of that crud. And then we're gonna see if it's straight, because we're gonna have like a minute or so to straighten it. Here we go. Chipping off all of that. Oh, that's the technique. Oh, that looks pretty good. Holy moly, that looks good. Got a slight bend in the tip. That's fine. It's soft enough to hopefully fix. Beautiful, there we go, lovely. So I'm just trying to flex it a little bit. It's getting hard already though, so it's probably a lost cause at this point. We probably are just risking snapping it, but we got plenty of meat. Oh yeah, no, we're gonna be good. We'll be just fine. Well, I think that was a successful hardening. Now, well, no, we actually don't know that yet. <laughs> Let's find out if it's a successful hardening. Do you wanna get the file? So now we gotta find out if we got lucky a second time. We need soft material here and hard material here. You go for it. Oh yeah, no. Soft as butter, yeah. and then the edge. edge. Moment of so truth. Ah, woohoo! That is an ear-numbingly hard blade. Great work, Alex. Awesome. So now the next step is we need to get all this schmoo off of there <laughs> so that we can immediately start tempering it. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah, sure. Great. a big problem. As I was applying pressure here on the blade, my hands over here because I was going to the tip, suddenly I hear a ding. You heard the I tink. I heard a terrifying ding. How loud was it? It was loud. I heard it through my hearing protection. Okay, maybe we got it on camera then. That'll be good. Who knows? Fingers crossed. Okay, well, I'm gonna finish sweeping because uh, it keeps my mind somewhere else. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this crack. Well, to my eye, that definitely looks like a crack. Oh boy. Look at that beauty. Woo. Ooh, that is a wide crack. Anyway, let's uh, let's temper this anyway. Because if we're lucky, we might just be able to cut down the blade and make a shorter one. In yesterday's episode, you will remember, we just tempered it with the outside of the forge, which on something so thin is very difficult to get really what we're looking for, which is a nice and consistent temper. What is a temper? So, having hardened it, as we noticed, it got extremely brittle, obviously, because it then cracked. And so what we want to do, ideally, before it cracks, at a lower temperature, in a very controlled manner, slowly bring the temperature up so that the structure at the edge is a little bit more supple and tougher and able to withstand the abuses of a sword because it's too brittle as you saw it cracked. That is what these are for. We are going to clamp the blade between these bits of steel. These are going to act as a heat sink, taking out as many irregularities in the heating as possible. So we're going to shine these up, clamp the blade between it and stick it in the forge. But now we're actually not going to do that. Now why is that? Well, let's flash back to just a few seconds ago where I realized something. Oh, Willie. I just realized something. If we cut down that blade, that hamon is going to go straight into the tip. Our hamon does this. Soft steel here. Which means that, with our crack coming right here, if we were to do what I was just thinking we would do, which is just simply cut down the edge like that, well then the tip of our falchion is going to end up having soft steel right here. So we can't do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we are going to poke it in the forge, Alex, and we are going to normalize it three times, and then harden it again after we've done the different shaping on the tip, brought it back down. What about Hamon though? Ah, Hamon. That's fine, we can just, we can do the, oh no, we, we don't have any more clay. Great, well we're gonna have to get clay so that we can do the Hamon again, but we'll be all right, we'll get it sorted. The, uh, the expression goes something like this. Knife makers don't make mistakes. Only smaller knives. Only smaller knives. That's a lie, we definitely made a mistake. This thing has a crack in it, that's, that's a mistake. Okay, so Alex is in the workshop doing those normalizing cycles. Now we need to run an errand. We have run out of the stuff that we used to make the hamon, so we need more of it. It's called gun gum. Let's see if this place has some. Place number one doesn't have it. Two's a failure. To the next place. There we go. That is the stuff. Two of these, please. Success. Back to the workshop. How's it going, Alex? We've got two more bits, two more tins of gun gum. So you've done a bunch of normalizing cycles. Yep. Great, what we now need to do is we need to cut the tip up. So 
So here is where we see how much we actually ended up cutting off. Let's put it up on the drawing. We cut off about two and a half inches or so. We have also lost about five millimeters off our width at the widest point. I think it'll still get the job done. And so of course, now we just have to wire wrap it again and then apply our authentic Japanese clay again. And I will also say it's not lost on me the irony and hypocrisy of on the first one that there was a mistake on starting again and then this time not starting again. But uh, I guess that's just how it goes. Alex has done a fantastic job playing the blade again. Great work, Alex. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, I thought a little more about the hilt area, so that's all good. And we have also started working on the tang hole in the guard. <laughs> this should now be dry-ish. So it's time for us to go in for the heat treat. I'm gonna go edge down. We're gonna warm this up, get a nice even heat, and go for the quench. Now I think the reason for the crack was entirely my fault because I warmed up the oil. Warming up the oil makes the quench happen faster. It's what I do with the 1080 steel. This is 1095, 0.15 extra percent of carbon. That extra speed with the cooling could have been our downfall. We haven't warmed it up anymore. Fingers crossed this time we get it quenched successfully. Like it's cracked, but I want to be really quick right now because the longer we leave it untempered, the more likely it is to crack. We've got the forge. What I did is while I was grinding it, I opened up the forge doors, I turned off the burners. That means we've dropped the temperature. We've got this in there to make it even less aggressive of a heating. Alex has got our heat even making jig sorted. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna take, take our blade. Let's lay that down on top, put our screws in. How exciting! So, into the fire we go. Good stuff. And let's start here. So while that is tempering and Alex is sorting that out, I want to think about a technique that we can add to the repertoire of things that we can do at the workshop, and that is inlay and I think that a really exciting part of this build to put some inlay on would be those fittings that are the guard, the cross and the pommel. So even though we've been flashy lately and we have forged gold here at the workshop, I think that we might take this one step at a time and try it with copper wire, a little copper wire inlay, slow and steady with, uh, with the jump into learning new things. But I don't have a graver. So we've got to make one, you know, need a tool, make a tool and all that. That's how we do it. This is a piece of 01 flat stock. It's currently in an annealed condition. We're going to zip down there with a cutting disc. We're going to do some grinding. This wire is a millimeter wide. So we're going to try and grind ourselves a tool that is going to be appropriate for what it is that we need it to do. To the grinding room. Got it roughed in with the 36 grit. It's uh, about twice the final thickness that we're gonna need it. So now we have to harden it. The forge obviously is in use, so we're gonna use a torch. We're gonna warm up this back section first, because obviously this tip will heat up really quickly. And in three, two, one. That should now be hard. Thankfully, this piece fits inside the oven. So we'll set it right there. And here, we'll do a proper two hour tempering cycle. So while we now have two parts of our project tempering, we're now gonna work on the guard. This, we had the option to leave it as forge, we had the option to grind it, we're gonna grind it because I do wanna try and carve a groove in there for an inlay, um, which might be a bad decision. Hopefully it's a good one. <laughs> so we are now 
and run into the grinding room, grind it, make it look all pretty. The little grave is out of the temper. Time to grind it. There's the graver, I've got it sharpened up. We're gonna try it at this width right now on this little test piece of mild steel. Oh wow, that's stuck. I think it's burying itself deep. Maybe if I try it upwards, maybe that'll help. Whoa! Look at that chip go! It's flying across! <gasps> this is amazing! That is the coolest thing I have ever seen. On this beautiful note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This is it for today's episode, and I cannot wait to see you tomorrow on the next one where we experiment more with this, we learn some more, we have some more fun. Thank you very, very much. Make sure to grab yourself your million subscriber t-shirt or a Doi's Definition shirt or how cool is that steel buoy shirt? Great job, another great day, Alex. Catch you guys tomorrow, bye-bye.